Welcome to Bentley House. Today I'm making strange Thanksgiving pies. Um, just because it sounded fun. Making normal Thanksgiving pies is fun too, but um, making strange ones is even more fun. So I have a few ideas and I have these um, bottle caps I've been saving up. So I thought I would just start filling them with some strange stuff and see what we can come up with. I want to do something Thanksgiving-y uh, because it's November um, in America, at least. <laughs> and uh, I realize Canada just had their Thanksgiving in October. And I don't know, um, y'all can let me know um, what you guys, I mean, is there, I know a lot of you are not from America. So you probably don't do Thanksgiving, but is there other holidays that you guys uh, make like pies for or like special desserts for? Because we make we make pies for Thanksgiving. That's just that's the thing. That's the thing. Good morning, Linda. You're watching from your ver University of California desk. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> uh, hi from Poland, from Canada. Awesome. Ola. Did I say that correct? Ola, please let me know. And church lady from Canada. Awesome. The, the, the Canadian Thanksgiving, do you guys do pies as well? Let me know. I don't know. Okay, so I have polymer clay here. And this is a pretty picked over polymer clay collection, but it's it just seems to keep going. Going and going. And so, um, I don't know. Just keeps giving. Now the pie I have in um, uh, the pie I have in mind, the strange pie I have in mind, is to make like a worm pie, and um, like so I'm thinking stuff like that, not gory. Like I don't like to do gory type stuff, but um, just kind of strange, like things you wouldn't normally find in a pie. So I was also thinking maybe like fish bones, kind of like on top or something. Let's see, Eileen says they do pumpkin. Hello from Germany. Hi, Annalie. Let me know. Kip, hi. Amelia. Yay, you made it for the first time. <laughs> Good to have you. Um, Alberta. Okay, so they do pies in Canada. Apple pie is my favorite. Absolute favorite. It's my favorite dessert from from everything. Like if I if I had to choose between like cake and an apple pie, I would go for apple pie. But if it's a different type of pie, then it'd kind of be a toss up because cake's pretty good. So um, I think what I need to do first for the worm pie, hi Marisa, you made it, yay. <laughs> Um, I think I need to make the worms first. So, cause I kind of want them like sticking up and I don't want them to like wilt in the oven. Um, but if you guys have ideas for other kinds of pies, please let me know. We're making strange pies. <laughs> Maybe an apple pie made with wormy apples. Oh, that's a good one. Like make it with apples and worms. Okay, that's a good one. So like they tried but the apples had worms in them. Cool, okay. So I think I'm gonna start making the worms at least. I've got the oven going and I found my little tray. This is my craft tray and I made crayon stuff on it. So it's just covered in wax. So I'm gonna have to like avoid the wax so that my uh, clay doesn't have wax all over it. So I just, I didn't clean it beforehand. So as always, if you guys have, oh, thumbs. I was thinking uh, Mrs. Mrs. Lovett's meat pies uh, when I was thinking of this, um, what I was gonna do today. That's a little, little, uh, it's a, it's, um, <laughs> I was gonna say, little morbid, little morbid, but you know, you know, it could just be thumbs. You know, the person may not, they may have just donated their thumb for a pie. A uh, rotten lemon pie. What does a rotten lemon look like? Or is it just lemon pie that's kind of got something growing on it? Ooh, dead bird pie. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> Ooh, pies with teeth. Ooh, that would be fun to make a, a pie that actually like 
like with a mouth open. I don't know if I'm ta that talented though. We'll have to see. I'm still learning polymer clay. Like I can get it to work, but when it's live, like you don't even know, like behind the scenes, I'm very much still like, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of the, pie, the pie with the teeth, like mouth open. Hi from UK. We had a bonfire night yesterday and we made toffee and toffee apples. What's plot toffee? Hmm. Pie with green black mold. I do have all my um, chalk pastels here ready to mold some stuff up. Green and hairy looking. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. A hand sticking out. <laughs> That kind of goes with the thumb pie. Maybe he's going like this. Good job on the pie. I approve. <laughs> yeah, I'm voting right after after my, um, if you're American, you got to get out and vote today. Um, I'm voting right after I close up the live stream. Got to go vote. Fish pie. I did say um, I was going to do like a uh, fish bone pie. Um, octopus pie, legs everywhere. That's a good one, too. Okay, we got lots of good ideas. That's awesome, because I only had a couple. I want to make these kind of thick worms. I want them to be noticeable. Um, so, I don't know. Should I add detail to them now or later? Um, I probably should go ahead and chop them up now. Make them a little bit longer so they can stick out really well and be really noticeable. Let me know if I need to, I can zoom in just a little bit. Let me know if I need to zoom out at some point. I'm just gonna start chunking off little wormies. I guess I could do like different color worms as well. That would look even grosser. Different color worms grosser, I'm not sure. Okay, just kind of rounding off the ends just a little bit. You know, they all they have like those rings around them as well, like those ring marks. So, should I do two different color worms or just one color worm? Maybe we'll just give ourselves some options. These kind of remind me of like, do y'all watch Sesame Street with the little wormies, the worm guys? You could see like the strings and the puppets. Those are some of my favorites. I liked Oscar the Grouch. Molasses, oh, okay. Sticky treacle toffee is a plot toffee. Wow. So you, ma you made it? You made the plot toffee? Anything with like boiling sugar and making Stuff like that just scares me because I'm gonna burn it and it's gonna be stuck to my pan forever. <laughs> oh, with a bat wing, that's a good idea. Um, different color size of worm. Ooh, a big fat gross one. Yeah, that would be really gross. Newt eye pie. That's a good one. <laughs> okay, so let me make a slightly different colored worm. Let's add some brown to this clay. Okay, is there anything else I should buy? <laughs> I'm kind of a rubbish cook also sometimes. It depends on what it is. If it's something I've made several times in a row, I'm good. But if it's something new that I've never made before, I tend to get easily frustrated um, when it comes to cooking. Like miniatures, like it's okay. If I've never made it before, like it's exciting and I want to see how it comes out. But food, like I just, I guess because I don't love it. I don't love making food as much as I love making miniatures. So I just get frustrated and like I, I've had, I've had a dinner party before where I invited people over and the people who came over actually finished making the food for me because I was done. I'm like, I'm sorry, there's no dinner. I can't, I can't finish it. It's horrible. It's ruined. And they actually finished cooking it for me. So anyway, there's, they're now our really good friends. So it didn't um, ruin our friendship or anything, but they were kind of like, are you okay? I'm like, no, the food is ruined. You need to fix it. 
Okay, so we've got some pink worms and now we'll do some thicker brown worms. Ooh, that'd be so gross. Not a bug person. Ooh, that one's really big. Okay. Screw so gross. But it's what I plan on making today. Okay. Big brown one. I'm gonna curl some of them up just a little bit too. Okay, so let's see, what else should we make beforehand? Um, I like the idea of like an octopus tentacle coming out, so maybe we can make an octopus tentacle to cook beforehand. So it's kind of coming out of the center, center of the pie. What else? Some of the other ones, like if, if we decide to make it, um, we can mostly make, it's just things that are like sticking up out of the clay. I probably need to bake beforehand so that they're stiff. I'm learning about clay as I go. <laughs> Ooh, a cobweb pie. How would you make that with clay? I'd have to make cobweb pie with something else, I'm guessing. Okay. I think that's enough for our worm pie. Let me kind of scrunch them up, make them twisty a little bit. And so they look a little bit more worm-like. Oh, it's gonna be so gross. Okay. It's gonna be so gross. Okay. There we go. Now, um, get these guys on here. And then I'm gonna make an octopus tentacle. They made, oh, I have Newt. They, in medieval times, they made like bird head or fish head pies. Ooh, fish head. Well, I was thinking fish bones, kind of like laying across the top of a pie. Should I make a fish head with the fish bones? Okay, so we got our worms on our tray, ready to cook. And I've got my oven going, so that's all set. Uh, what color octopus arm should we make? I always tend to make my octopus, like every single time I make octopuses, octopi, purple. I make them purple. Maybe I should do like a bluish purple one. Blue, blue, purple, brownish. Make cobwebs like the worms, then place a circle of web. Oh, I see. So make, pre-make the web. It's, they're so tiny. I'm not sure I have the polymer clay skill to make such a tiny, thin piece of polymer clay work. Purple. Gray purple? That's a good idea. Gray purple. Okay, I'm mixing some blue and purple together, and then we'll add some gray, because I do have some gray. We'll see what we come up with here. I'll just do a couple tentacles, because the we got to make sure they're kind of fit in these little guys. A fish head and a fish end coming out of a pie. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Like he's kind of like laid in the pie. Okay, mix in the blue and the purple. And it's in this. I made a, recently I made an apple pie or an apple sour cream pie. And it was delicious. Nobody else liked it, but I did. But that was okay because I got to eat the whole thing. <laughs> Eileen suggested with the fish head and the fish in coming out of the pie. Okay, I think we can do that because I was thinking fish already. Um, these could go in the Adams Family um, project, Rob, but there's another project that's a secret project right now that um, these might possibly go into. And if you've been watching my Instagram uh, page, you've probably seen a hint at it, but I really can't say yet what it is, but I'm super excited. <laughs> I've been working on it nonstop, and I'm so sad that I can't share each and every step because I've just been having so much fun. <laughs> oh, you like apple pie with sour cream too? It's so good. It's so delicious. Okay, we have like a bluey, purpley color. Um, I think it needs a little brown. 
just to make it a little less bright. Um, fish eyeball pie. Ooh. You like Eileen's suggestion also with the fish head and fish end coming out. Okay. I have a couple fishy pies. That's okay. Some fishy pies. Um, I think I can make that though. I don't think I have to pre make it. Hi Afro. I'm so glad you made it. Yay. <laughs> we've got, this is the biggest crowd we've had in a while. So welcome to everybody. Ooh, that brown kind of took over. Ugh. I need like clay mixing lessons is what I need. Okay. This is the last, this is the last one. I'm making it crazy craft lady. You made it too. Yay. <laughs> You're not that late. We're just pre-baking some things to go into some interesting Thanksgiving pies. And I'm making a mess of my polymer clay colors. So you haven't missed too much. <laughs> we made worms because we're going to make a worm pie. And now I'm making, I'm trying, if I can get my color theory together, um, trying to make an octopus tentacle. Okay, so now I'm just going to take less than what I had. This is the last attempt, and then we're just we're just making it. We're making it. Um, make a little octopus tentacle coming out of the pie, and let's see. I need to make a list of what we're thinking we want to make. I have some foam board here. Let's make a list. Pen, pencil work. All right. Well, I'm doing this with one hand, so we're gonna make worm pie. We're gonna make um, octopus pie, and we're gonna make fish head tail pie. I have one, two. I don't think we can make all these pies today. Um, let's see what what were the other suggestions? I'm gonna scroll through. There was the cobweb pie idea. That was a good one. We'll see. We'll see if I can make that happen. Um, trying to go back through. Ooh, the dead bird pie. That would be so cool looking, but I have to make a bird. We'll write it down. We'll see how far we get. We'll see how far we get through these. And then, and then, um, we'll keep going if we've got more time. Okay, so it's kind of a darkish purple color. Can y'all see it okay? Let me turn this light up just a little bit. Oh, that was wrong. There we go. Kind of on the side of me, but maybe it's a little bit brighter now. Let's see. Now I'm like up lit. I don't know why it seems, does it seem dark to you guys? Let me know if it seems dark to you. Not why, sure why it's doing that. Okay. So I've got this darkish purple color. Ooh, green slime bubbles. That's a good one. Good morning, Carmen Lita. Welcome to the stream. A little bit more blue. I think I've 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 over mixed it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Charlotte. Yes, I I really like how the outside outside of the Adams house came. I mean, it just, I'm extremely happy with it. I kind of, I didn't really know how it would turn out, but I really like it. Hi from Chelmsford, England. Pasta machine to mix clay. Yes. Well, this is really soft clay, and so it's not too bad, but oftentimes, like, if it's a lot of clay, then I do, I just can't get my lighting right today. I don't know what the issue is. knock everything around. Thank you. Recipe for apple sour cream pie. Okay, maybe for Thanksgiving, like around that time, I'll look it up because I'm definitely going to make it and then I'll post it on my Facebook page or something. Okay, so I'm just going to make like three little tentacles. And do we want to put the sucker things on them? I'm going to maybe do the sucker things in blue. Like a bluish gray type color. Spiritual Casino, hello. Welcome to the stream. 
All right, I think I'm gonna do little suckers in blue. This blue gray, just a few. For the suckers, use a big pin top with the hole in it. I would like to push the push them in. Well, I was gonna try because they're so little. I was gonna try and just make little balls. Green gooey pie would look nice with the UV resin. Oh, that would look good. Hi, Muggle Mason. Um, I actually also have this clear poly clay stuff. And so I might try using that as well. So is the lighting like as bad as I think it is right now? Or is it just my screen is showing it to me bad? Because it looks nice and bright on my desktop, but you, I feel like it's just dark. I don't know what the deal is here. Is it this? Sometimes the camera just picks up on white and makes everything else horrible. Maybe my I tried to pick a like a surface to work on that wasn't too bright and colorful. Well, I mean, I guess it is bright and colorful. Okay, it is a little dark. Let me see if making the light go up helps. It's like counterintuitive. Make the light go away and the lighting is better. Does that make any sense? Ah, and knock everything over. All right, we'll try that. Um, and then after I go put stuff in the oven, I'm going to move this piece of paper and hopefully that might help a little bit too. Okay. Got a toothpick. I got a little ball of clay. And I'm just going to stick it on like so. Think the lighting's okay? Okay. We'll go for it for now. Lighting is one of the toughest things I find for um, getting my videos. Like, I could be next to like the brightest window, but if you have it like focused on the wrong thing, it just like the video is so dark. Now, I used to have like my own like like amateur photography thing, and I remember just lighting. Lighting is a beast. Let me know if I go off camera, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end. I'm just gonna go like, like that. He's got a little tentacle. Okay, I'm gonna put him. It's um, polymer clay. Um, I have been using a lot of air dry clay recently and I've really been enjoying it and um, I want to do a uh, like an, another like a video just on air dry clay and like techniques and stuff that I've learned because like I think a lot of people think air dry clay is just cracks and it's hard to work with which is true but um, there's ways to fix it even after it's dried so Shouldn't mix lights, for example, daylight with halogen doesn't mix. Yeah, I thought turning on the overhead light was gonna help, but maybe not. <laughs> Missed the begging. What was the begging part? <laughs> oh, hi from Taiwan. Wow, it's midnight. Well, thanks for being here so late. <laughs> That's dedication. Um, use paper clay for crust. Paper clay is really good for crust because it does, like, if you don't smooth it over with water, it does have, like, a very, um, crusty look to it if you don't 
take the time to smooth it over, so that is a good one. Put some more tentacle pieces on here. And like so. Oh, the beginning. <laughs> okay, I was wondering what the begging was. I'm like, I don't remember any begging. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put two more on this guy. Today we are making strange Thanksgiving pies. So, uh, I have a list. We're making a worm pie, making an octopus pie, a fish head and tail pie, cobweb pie, and dead bird pie. And we'll make more if we get through those. So here's one of my little tentacles. And then just one more, and then I'll stick them in the oven. Oh yeah, mascara brushes are a good idea. I have, this came in like a little um, clay making kit. So I have that one. But it's basically just a giant mascara brush. <laughs> All right, so I should really, before I do anything polymer clay, I should really just cut my nails because my nails end up getting like the brunt of the clay in there and then I have to dig it out. <laughs> I'm sure that's gross, sorry. So I'm making little bitty ones for this little bitty guy. And I think from the rest of them, I think these are all the things I want to pre-cook. So I can go get these in. And then I'll have to set an alarm because I can't hear my oven from here. Well, I can if I'm paying attention, but most of the time I'm not. So I think these will stick out really nice. Bye, Eileen. Thanks for coming. I'll repost on Friday so you can see what else we made. Some of these are turning out a little oblong, that's okay. Long nails and polymer clay do not mix. Yep, they don't, which is why I think I got frustrated when I first started trying it out because um, like I'd work really hard on something and then I would like go to set it down and then I'd have a, like 12 nail marks in it from me just touching the thing. So once I learned just try not to touch it at all <laughs> like on very detailed things uh, that helped. Okay. So I've got our little octopus tentacles in our worms, and I've tried to avoid putting them in any of the crayon wax from my previous projects. And I'm going to go put them in the oven, and I'll be right back. Okay, put a timer on my phone for 15 minutes, and then start working on the base of something else. Okay. Ooh, hello from Russia. Aw, thank you. That's so sweet. Clay softener with a brush removes marks. Yes, I need to try that. I've had that in the back of my head for forever, but I've never actually tried it. <laughs> Using a ceramic tile for baking. I've used different baking and prefer the tile. I usually, when I think about it, I have this um, lid from like an old like um, candle or like a um, jar and so I put it on here but then my the little slats that are in my oven just barely like are like this and so the thing like moves if I don't pick it up perfectly and then my stuff falls in the oven so I need to get something just a little bit bigger but I like this to sculpt on even though I'm sculpting on paper right now 
Put baking paper onto the clay to avoid any shine on finished pieces. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm baking pumpkin oatmeal cookies. Mmm, that smells really good. That smells really good. I'm sure it smells really good. It sounds really good. Okay, so these um, battle battle cups, bottle caps, are from, let me see if this helps. There you go. I just had to remove the annoying thing, and now you can see my gross mat, but oh well. Um, these are just bottle caps from various bottles. Um, it's a cream soda one. I don't, I don't know. Is that Budweiser maybe? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with my logos, but my friends know to kind of give me some bottle caps. And, um, what I do, because I really don't want that symbol on the bottom, like I'm not super specific in like worrying about getting all of it off, but, um, that's why I prefer these cream soda ones because even if it's a little bit on the side, you don't really notice it all that much. Let's take some sandpaper and it just comes off really easy and it gives you kind of a nice baking pan look. And it'll also grind down your long nails if you're not careful. <laughs> Bought baking mini mats for polymer clay. Huh. Like, um, like mini, like they're actual for baking. Yarn would work for worms. Yeah, you could use string, I'm sure. Okay. I already have one. This one I sanded a little bit earlier. And then I usually like take some um, like paint and just kind of muddy it up anyway. But um, these um, diet cream soda ones were I like the ones that the the printing, the image printing on it is pretty light. All right, that's enough. That's good enough for me. You don't usually see the bottom of the pie anyway. Um, and then I usually just kind of wipe my fingers off and then wipe off the bottom of the bottle cap, whichever one it was. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, so they are baking, like actual baking, they're for baking. Awesome. I didn't know if there was a special clay baking mat because I'm sure there is one out there. So I think while the worm and octopus pieces are cooking. We'll go ahead with filling the fish head fishtail pie. So I made, where's that weird ugly color? I made this weird ugly color earlier trying to make a thing for an octopus. Um, so I'm just gonna start filling this up because really all you need for the pie is to see the top. Um, well, it, it can be for the Adamses, but I also have a project that I'm kind of doing in the background and I'm really excited about it, <laughs> but I, I can't share yet. It will be shared, I believe, on November 18th on my channel. So I'm very excited about that and I think these pies may be a part of it. So make sure to check that out November 18th. Um, so yeah, but they could also end up in the Adam's Kitchen because they totally fit in there too. All right, I don't want to fill it too much. Let's see, I need to make probably a pie crust color. So I have this like yellowy. I think the lighting's better. Don't you guys think so? I think it's just a little bit better now, which is good. So I want you guys to be able to see the colors I'm actually using and not just dimmed colors. I think it was that pink piece of paper. Anytime I put white or pink or anything light colored on the camera, my camera just goes, nope, nope. I don't like this. <laughs> All right, so I have to figure out a way to have the fish head coming up and out. I'm kind of putting the pie crust around it. Ooh, a Venus flytrap pie. That's a good one. 
Oh, we talked about a pie with a mouth. That reminded me. We talked about a pie with a mouth. Let's see. Pie with mouth. Okay, so I want to try and give a pie teeth. I think that would be cool. The crust on top. Oh, I see. So have it like coming out of the side. Like they just totally just took a fish and stuck it on top and then just put a pie crust on it. That's a good pie crust color, I think. I like that. All right, so should we do a green fish? I think that'd be eye-catching. Green fish. And I have like so much green. It's all just kind of stuck together here. <laughs> it's actually the new project that I'm talking about. It's just going to show up in just one video i'm showing you all the steps to the one project in one video it's not a new project like the adams family where it's like like episodes over and over again but still really exciting and it may it may cause me to do more projects in that style in the future so i don't know <laughs> not the octopus one it will look like aristotle <laughs> Oh yeah, no, we wouldn't we wouldn't cook Aristotle. I see what you're saying. He's a family pet. Okay, where's the pie? Here it is. So we gotta make him long enough to kind of go out the sides. Okay, this is where I get this guy. Cause I really don't like sculpting on top of this mat cause it does make it really sticky. So I prefer to do that on top of, um, like paper, but my my camera doesn't want to look at the paper today, I guess. So I'm going to make him just a little bit skinnier. I'm going to start cutting out his shape. Let me get a blade. Um, this blade's not very sharp anymore, but we're going to try it anyway. Hopefully I don't have to look up a fish reference. We'll just see if I remember what a fish looks like. White gesso from Master's Touch at Hobby Lobby to make something to paint white. You can paint anything on it without the bottom color showing. I actually just recently used gesso in a project. I've had it for years and I was like, oh, I think I have some and I found it. I actually still had it. Yes, I, I agree. No octopus pie in the Adam's kitchen. Poor Aristotle. Okay, so let me check again. I think his fin's gonna have to thin out quite a bit and get towards the end. Like that. Okay, we got a fish shape. Just gotta make him look a little bit better. And the nice thing is I only have to really worry about one side of him. But I do think the fin needs to be a bit thinner. Hopefully I can get it off. <laughs> that would be nice if I can get it off. I don't really have to worry about the body that much. I mean, I want the shape, but I don't have to make like a fin or anything because it's gonna be covered. But I do need to worry about the face. I'm trying to think where the fish's eye goes. I guess it depends on what kind of fish it is roadkill pie <laughs> possum with tire tracks wouldn't he be like i'd have to have a big pie pan for that guy i think i need like a gray eye don't you guys think he needs like a gray dead gross eye something like that He looks like he's smiling. He looks like a goldfish cracker now. Maybe I shouldn't have done the face, the mouth like that. There we go. Now he doesn't look so smiley. <laughs> Happy accidents, yes. 
blade under your clay will help lift it off. Okay. I will do that because usually if I do something as small, I just cook it on here. So you put a few details into his fin. Those aren't super great details, but we'll just cover it up with chalk pastel later on. I do want his tail to be just a little bit jaggedy, like so. Alright, let's get some gray for his eye. Maybe some gray mixed with white, as long as the eye is looking at you. Yes. It's got to be creepy. Does, it, does anyone eat fish where the eye is still attached to the fish? I have a real hard time doing that. I love fish, but I have a hard time when you can still see the 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 eyes. Can't do it. <laughs> yes, paint will definitely help anything. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to mix to like it's hard to mix like just the smallest amount because there's like nothing to squish. I already got clay all in my nails. I tried so hard to match my nails to each of my Adams Family videos. I got two videos in and then that stopped. But I was proud, I, I didn't think I'd get past one, so I was proud of myself. <laughs> oh, your husband eats it with the, with the eye looking at you? That's tough, that's tough. <laughs> yes, no eating food that's looking at me. The only thing I've ever, I've ever done that with was crawfish. Of course, we live in the south, so every now and then there's a crawfish boil. <sighs> Still, at, at that, it wasn't very many. Okay, so I've got a little bit of gray here. I'm going to see if it fits. It's kind of bugged out there a little bit. It makes me feel gross, then it's probably right. I'm just gonna do a little dot of the dark gray. The littlest dot. See if I can get it in there. Now he's staring you down. <laughs> oh, thank you. See if I can say your name, Alethium. Thank you so much. I'm so glad everyone's enjoying that project and like everything I do now, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's coming to an end. Like 10 years, 10 years of working on the Adams Family is coming to an end. Like it's just, it's just really crazy to me because it's just been going on for so long. <laughs> and give him a little bit of texture on his face. Said mouth open. Hmm. Hi, Teresa. Welcome. It's crazy. I work crazy hours. I'm always sleeping when you're live. Oh, yay. I'm glad you make it. you made it. I hope you can still get sleep, though. <laughs> Reindeer eyeballs. Ooh. I'm sure they are a delicacy. Has anyone noticed that most things considered a delicacy are not anything anyone really wants to eat? I have. I'm like, I'm okay with it being a delicacy, something I can't afford because it sounds gross. I'm trying to make the mouth open. I'm not, I don't know. What do y'all think? Mouth open? Let's put him on the pie and then we can kind of mess with him a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to leave him here and go get the other things out so they can start cooling. And then um, we'll put the fish on the pot. Worms and octopus. Put them over here. Okay. So now we're going to put the fish on the pie. Yes, I would love to add holiday to decor to the Adams Family Mansion. I think that would be so fun. Um, there are like uh, a few, Adam, I think Charles Adams cartoons where um, you see their tree and it's all like pretty much dead. 
and like make like some really dark wreaths and stuff. I think that would be really fun. Okay, we got a little fishy dude. Stick him on his pie. Oh, he's not long enough. How did I mess that up? All right, so I'm gonna skinnyfy him a little bit. Um, when you've cooked the fish, the mouth does open. Oh, that's good to know. Don't cook a lot of whole fishes. That's good to know. Um, how are the Adams Family dolls going? Um, I've still only just made Fester, and um. My son calls him the man who lives in the house. <laughs> He's like, where's the man? Where's the man who lives in the house? <laughs> so um, I, I did enjoy making him. I'm just a little bit nervous about the rest of them because he was bald. And so um, that felt a little bit easier to me. Okay, he's losing like all his body shape, but you know, he's gonna be under a pie. So we just wanna make sure his face and his tail are sticking out. How did I mess this up? I measured it like twice. <laughs> Just cut in half. Oh, that's a good idea. It's better than what I'm doing here. There we go. He's gonna be long and skinny. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on what made you start creating dollhouses. Um, well, I went to school for to study architecture and um, we always had to do projects with uh, models and so whatever project we had to do someone had to build the model and I always loved being the person who built the model like other people would do the posters and the paper and all that kind of stuff and I would build the model and um, actually worked in the architecture field for about four years and um, after after that was done after I was done doing that I just still really missed building models and um so i decided oops i'm not doing that very well that's okay if it's ripped and torn it's it's a strange pie um i still really missed it and so i worked for a lady who did theater set design and i built some models of her theater sets and then i kind of moved away from um from where she was so i didn't really help her with that anymore and then one day I was just at Hobby Lobby and there was this dollhouse and it looked, I was like, like that looks fun. And then I bought it and that was the Adams Family House. <laughs> so it was my very first dollhouse ever was the Adams Family House. What's still going on now? <laughs> um, I need to make pies for my son's dollhouse. Yes, pies are fun to make, I think. They're not too, too complicated. I have a crafter splat mat. It's great for polymer clay. I do love the candle lid idea. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it's nice to like hold in my hand. I got the idea from um, Sugar Sugar Charm Shop because she has like ceramic discs, but I don't have one of those. So yeah, it does, it does look a little bit more like an eel now. I wonder if I should like cut this probably. Use the paddle, bottle cap to cut the crust. Yeah, I think I will. Let me see. That's just, a, I just don't want to put too much on and have too much hanging over. So I'm just going to take a little, like y'all are just seeing me like craft in the words here. So let me move it up a little bit. Cut out roundy piece. And pop this guy out. And I'm just gonna kind of drape him over like so. I have to make it look a lot more crusty, for sure. I think I'm gonna have to squish him down on just a little bit. So you're gonna make the fin droop over. All right, do y'all ever do the thing with the fork on the edge of the pie where you like press it around to make it look fancy, but it's not really fancy because you just used a fork. <laughs> Tiny bit of cornstarch or powder helps the clay not stick to the mat. Oh, that's a good idea, seeing as I already got it all stuck everywhere. <laughs> that's why I try to do it on the paper. 
but the paper is messing up my camera. Yeah, I I actually, I probably should have started with something a little bit smaller than an entire mansion, but it seems to be how I do things. I just kind of go f like whole hog into something. Okay, I don't know if this was the best thing. I think I should have left it big because now I have nothing to like push around to make a pie. So I'm going to roll it out again. I've also heard you can use old clay to like pick up pieces. Maybe I'll just roll it out on paper. No, it's probably going to stick to the paper. I am not clay prepared. <laughs> go big or go home, yes. That seems to be my motto. And 10 years later, still working on the thing. But I've bought several dollhouses in between and given away several dollhouses in between. And I actually just gave away one last, was it last week or the week before? I gave away, I don't know, probably can't tell. There was a big one behind me and I just didn't have the passion for it. I really just never wanted to work on it. And like, I was like, why do I have this when someone else can enjoy it? Um, so yeah, I gave it to a family with um, a, four little girls. And so they're going to enjoy it and uh, hopefully make something really cool out of it. Place the crust and then the push, put the fish on the very top. Well, now the fish is all deformed because I, I did it wrong. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to push it on there. Rolling on paper leeches. Rolling on paper leeches the oil from clay. Oh, okay. I was like, paper leeches? We could make a leech pie. I thought you were talking about leeches. But now I see what you're saying. Okay. So now I'm going to try and be smarter about this, hopefully. Get the shape of the fish. Maybe we'll just roll up the edges, kind of like the pie crust curled a little bit. And then I'm going to push down and make the bottle cap cut the edges of the pie. Like you suggested earlier. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, for a while I was a little concerned when I, okay, I'll, I'll tell you honest truth about the Adams Family dollhouse. It is not put together. The original house in the middle is not put together super well. It um, is not uh, like 90 degree angles. Like one of the walls is like this. One of the walls is like this. And so um, it just <laughs> was not put together super well. Of course, this is, you know, first dollhouse I ever put together and I did my best, but it just, um, anyway, so I've been kind of dealing with that all along. And if you look really closely, so I'm just using a toothpick to put those like typical pie marks in the middle, you know, like the fancy pie marks. If I can, we'll see. Um, I've been dealing with that all along. Anytime I add something, I kind of have to, uh, well, I liked the small pie marks and then I didn't like my big pie marks. Of course, the fish will mess you up, I guess. All right, so I have a little fish pie and now I'm gonna dust him up a little bit. What was I saying? Oh, so now anytime I add something to the Adams Family House, I have to compensate for the fact that I didn't put it together correctly. But it's the Adams family. So if it leans a little bit, it's, it's okay. That's been my theory from the beginning. If it's messed up a little bit, it's okay. <laughs> Poke holes in the crust. Oh yeah, the girls will love it. Um, I just, I've decided, sorry, I'm talking about like three different topics at the same time. Um, I've just decided like if I have a project and I'm just like I don't have it in my heart to work on it, then I don't need to work on it because I have so, like I have a list of projects I'm dying to do. So why have a project that I'm just not interested in when someone else could be, you know, using it? So that's my theory now. Cause you know, you just don't, you don't, you don't have enough room to have a billion projects that you're never going to work on. 
Okay, so I'm just adding, this is um, uh, just like I took a chalk pastel and just used my X-Acto knife and just scraped off a bunch into these little cups. And it is working so much better than trying to get the chalk pastel straight off of the stick. It works so much better and I get so much more pigment. So, um, cause I used to have to like go back over and over again to get more. And so I'm very much liking it kind of shaved off like this. I build dollhouses to give them away. I don't have the space to keep them. So I just build them until I'm done and find someone who'll love it. That's awesome, Tanya. I love that. I really want to, like once my live streams get a little bit bigger, there's a corporation called um, Dollhouses for Kids Battling Cancer. And I really wanna do like a, a fundraiser for them because I think that's so amazing. Like that they would, you know, make, and they, they take dollhouses and donations and um, like if you have extra stuff, and then um, they make an entire dollhouse, furniture and everything, and then deliver it to a child who's suffering from cancer. And it's just like a little joy in their day. And I think that's so great. So um, I definitely wanna do a fundraiser for them sometime. I think that would be really cool. So here's the pie crust. I mean, adding the chalk pastel makes all the difference, I think. <laughs> Yeah, making it, I mean, I think it's one lady who runs this dollhouse um, donate the um, cancer for, for the kids thing, <laughs> whatever the word is. I think it's one lady and she does them all and I think that's just what she does. And I don't know how she does things so quickly. It's pretty amazing to me. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of black up here on the top just because probably that part would be closer to the coils on the oven. So that part probably get a little, a little more burnt, at least on my oven it would. Like so, I'll put a little bit on the, on the other side. I think they have a Facebook page. I think it's dollhouse, dollhouses for kids battling cancer. I think that's the name. Or just put dollhouses, kids, cancer, and see if you can find it. If you're really interested in looking them up. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And there's so many people who have dollhouses. And if you just, if you go out of the hobby, they're huge. Dollhouses are huge. You don't have anywhere to take them. So if you can give a, a little bit of joy to a kid, why not? All right. So someone said, how do you seal the pastels? Um, I think... I think once it cooks, they, they hold on pretty well um, because the clay is still uncooked. Is that correct? Cooked? <laughs> um, since it's still relatively uncooked, um, I think it'll just kind of stay on there. I don't know, we'll see. We'll rub it and see if it comes off. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we talked last time about a swap. What if we made a donation from all of us? Between all of us, we could furnish a whole dollar. That would be that would be amazing. Like I think that would be great. If any, if anyone was interested in that, let me know. If if you wanted me to organize, um, like if y'all send it to my PO box, and then I could send a big a big. Let's like I would pay for the shipping of whatever we gather to send. I think that would be awesome. I would be totally up for that. Okay. I need to um, cook the fish a little bit. So I'm gonna put some pastels on him. Cause don't they turn, they get a little crusty, I think. I mean, I would be more than happy to organize that just cause I think it's such an amazing idea. And then I'll have to glaze his little eyeball once it comes out. Okay, what do y'all think? If I stop moving it, maybe you can see it. <laughs> I'm just afraid to, to make his body too dark because then you may not be able to tell exactly what he is. Let's see. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna put him to, to the side. Uh, where am I gonna put him? 
put them on the tray, I guess. Okay. Um, we also, let's see, see if our worms and our octopus have cooled off. They have. Well, the tray has. One tentacle, two tentacles. These all are worms. Ah. Oh, that would be so nice. You would donate a piece that you made. Okay, well, I'll, I'll start thinking about that and I may go ahead, I haven't actually talked to the person who's in charge of this, but I may go ahead and talk to her and maybe I'll ask her kind of what they need. Um, see if that might inspire, if some people are like, I don't know what to send, maybe that might inspire some people. So maybe I'll think about doing that in the spring um, so that people have enough time to kind of to get something together if they want to donate. Okay, so worm pie. What should we make? I kind of want to make it look like the worms are bursting out of the center. So should we make the inside kind of brown? I think no matter what it is, if there'd been a bunch of worms in it, it'd probably be brown. <laughs> yeah, the tentacles did really get dark. They did get dark. We can kind of brighten them up with just a little bit of either chalk pastel or paint. I can kind of brighten them up a little bit. Okay. I think we're gonna go with brown. I'm running low on brown. That's all I got left. Apparently, I use a lot of brown. But you can make brown by just mixing two colors that don't like each other together. That's what my, that's my teacher voice in me when I'm teaching a, uh, elementary school. These colors don't like each other, so they make brown. <laughs> um, I have these, but they're really pastel-y, and this brown is shimmery. And it's not even brown, it's kind of like an orange, but beggars can't be choosers. We're gonna go, we're gonna add just a little bit of brown to this stuff. I guess it's gold. It's gold color. need enough to fill up the pie to make the word worms coming out. Make the filling for the worm pie like grass and brown mixed together. Oh, like there's pieces of grass coming out too? That's a good idea. Like someone literally just made a dirt pie. Gross. <laughs> I guess I could, like, even, I could put moss on it, like the moss that I use for, like, the parts of my projects. Well, that just turned, like, copper color. I don't know why I didn't notice that this stuff had sparkles in it when I first got it. I'm just adding more brown, but it's not helping. <laughs> I usually don't buy anything with sparkles in it. I'm not a, a sparkly, a sparkly gal. Okay. Use the liquid stuff to make it gooey. Do a lattice crust. Okay, that's a good idea. I'll be displaying some mini goodie bags next year in case anyone would be interested. Do you want to or consider a plan on exchanges for next year? I would really love to make it to where you guys could swap and do stuff like that. I just... I, what I need to do is find someone who does it successfully somewhere and what platform they use. And um, that's what I need to do. I need to find someone who does it successfully. Okay, so I think I'm going to have the worms kind of coming out from one side, not necessarily the middle. So I'm just going to start sticking them in. And we'll just see what happens. I'm glad I baked them beforehand. That was the right choice. Oh, these brown ones are so big. <laughs> yes, I have um, liquid clay 
Let me see. Did you say what you wanted? Someone else said something about liquid clay. Use the liquid stuff to make it gooey. I need it to be a little bit stiff though, so that the worms stay in place. Do you need to put the crust on first? If I want to do a lattice crust, probably. Okay, so, all right, let's make a plan. I think maybe, maybe should I mix, so are you saying that I should mix some of this brown with some of this stuff? Put it on top of here so it looks like mud, then put the lattice on, then put the worms in? Is that what we want to do? I think that's what we want to do. Now I need to find something to mix this on. Got a plastic lid. I'm going to mix some dirt. Make some gooey mud. Mm, and I don't know if this is the correct amount to mix, but we'll just play it by ear. I'm not out of brown yet. Is there an easy way to mix this stuff? Or you just go for it? <laughs> Hello, Arizona. Yay, welcome. Oh. What was your question? Sorry, Alethium. Let me see if I can see if I can find it. Um, is there any projects that we might see in the future? Um, I, I talked about it earlier. There's one, and it's not like a um, a, a like a long-term project like my Adams Family one. There's one that's coming up on November 18th that I am extremely excited about. And, but it's just one video where I show you the entire project, but it may spur some similar projects in the future. I don't know if I'm mixing this extremely well. I do not know. But I can show you something I bought, which will be a long-term, um, a long-term project. I'll show it to you in a second once I get this stuff mixed up. Is there an easier way to mix this? Oh, I'm mixing it correctly. Nope, so this is just the way you mix it. <laughs> it just takes forever. Just make the filling thinner, then poke your worms through the crust, add pieces on the bottom. Consider a glow-in-the-dark pie. Just glow-in-the-dark medium. Ooh, that's cool. I don't have it today, but that's a cool idea. Uh, maybe add some bits of gravel so the filling looks chunky. Hmm, I actually have that. Let me... I'm going to add a little bit more of this. I feel like we're heavy on the clay side. Let me see if I have that. My hands are all sticky. It's all sticky. Okay. I have a little bit of sand. I don't want to put in too much because I don't know if it'll affect, it well, probably won't affect the clay, it's just sand. We'll just experiment. I'm going to make this a really good worm pie. Tiny bit cleaner. Okay, before I start mixing this again, um, let me show you. I bought a Fairfield green leaf kit, and it's this three story, but it's half scale. And I have these little half scale skeletons and I want to make a skeleton mansion. I'm so excited. So you guys get to see um, the first look at this, but I don't know when it's going to happen because I want to at least get the coffee shop or the Adams Mansion done before I start this. But as you can see, it's not far from my desk because I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Let's see if I miss some. Uh, the coffee shop has not been worked on since Adam's Family October. And then I have this other project that's coming out in November. 
So coffee shop's feeling a little neglected, but the next thing I need to do is the, um, like the really nice patio set. And so I want to make sure that I have enough time to do a really good job on that. And also to make it clear enough so that if you guys wanted to try making it, that you could. And that takes time for me to kind of get those things going. So um, I just don't want to rush anything on the coffee shop because I really like how it's going and I know you guys are enjoying it too. I, d I miss the coffee shop too. I feel like Adam's October was so fun, but then I'm like, poor coffee shop. I haven't touched it in so long. Sorry, y'all can't even see. Sorry. So I'm just going to add, it kind of looks like chocolate. It looks delicious. But don't eat it. <laughs> Thank you. I've never made a green leaf house. Um, well, I, that's not true. I have one sitting right here. <laughs> I, I made one a long time ago, but um, it sat in my attic for a long time. And um, I now it's going to be my dollhouses, my daughter's dollhouse. But it never got finished. So she's kind of given me directions on what she wants me to do. So those might be, those videos might be sprinkled in here or there. And it's going to be fairy dragon themed. So purpley pinks glitter everywhere. Of course, this is my daughter's dollhouse. So <laughs> of course, it's going to be purpley pink and glittery. <laughs> oh, you have a fair field too. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I hate to like get like say, oh, I have this project coming and then it not be like coming for like a year. <laughs> but since y'all asked, you got to see the preview. All right, so we have a nice little bit of mud here. I like how that's looking. So now I need to um, roll out the lattice work for the pie. Put that over here. Yeah, he's really gooey. And I can see the salt, the salt, the sand bits just a little bit, but um, not very much. So I probably could have put more in there. Um, at Hobby Lobby, a green leaf one, and it's only two floors, so I added another one at the bottom. Oh, cool! That's what I did with my Adams family. I added a floor to the bottom. Green leaf houses, yeah, they are really, really detailed, and I like the way that this one kind of is very deep. I don't know if that makes sense, but like the Adams family is very like flat. Like there's the opening and the room, but this green leaf is kind of like an L and you can like look around and there's like pathways that go behind things. And it's very like intricate on the way that you like look at it. I have to make some more pie color and now it's just sticking to the mat. Great. It was a pain, <laughs> but it was fun. I just bought a miniature kit and the instructions are in a different language. Oh no. Um, <laughs> well, I know that sometimes you can find translated directions online. So I would type it in and just say this kit um, in English and see if it pops up for you. Like you never know what you can find online. Um, I have a kit right now. Um, that I'm doing with my miniatures group and it is all in Japanese but uh, someone found a link to the English instructions online. <laughs> I, n I hardly ever read the directions I just try and find pieces that fit together but I think for this Fairfield I definitely am gonna have to read the directions for sure. <laughs> I'm on my fourth. Awesome. I probably need to count it up, but kind of dollhouses, but okay. I'm going to use my little pasta thingy machine for this just to kind of get, try and get them as even as possible. And so it stops sticking. I'm very lumpy when I do this. Let's see. I'm going to make it kind of thin. All right. So I'm gonna... Nope. Probably even thinner than that. All right, I think that's a good thickness. Whoops, it's okay, we're all right. 
Yes, I am. Um, I have it's Google Translate. You can hold your phone over um, at whatever you're looking at, and it'll kind of give you a, a translation. It's not the greatest though. Do you know of one that's better than Google Translate? But I have to use it. My daughter's homework is in a, is in a language that I do not speak, so I use it almost daily to help her. Um, and sometimes it's accurate and sometimes it's not. So now I'm just cutting little strips to hopefully make the lattice work for the pie. Make sure there's a rat. <laughs> Yes, we're doing polymer clay today, making weird Thanksgiving pies. And none of them actually have anything to do with Thanksgiving. But we're making pies. Oops, that was a really thin one. That's okay. Hopefully I have enough. We shall see. <laughs> been watching people create beautiful cardboard dollhouses with hot glue and stuff on YouTube. I'm kind of curious to try and make one like that. Hmm. I have not seen that. Looks like I need to look that up. I love cardboard. I made so many projects out of cardboard. Of course, y'all know, if you've watched my videos, paper products are my jam. I love anything paper. I understand paper. Polymer clay, I'm still learning. But, um... I, I, paper is where where uh, how I understand miniatures the best. Okay, so I'm just gonna start. Like I don't think I've ever been good at making lattice work on a pie. I've tried it before, but like, don't you have to like? Should, I, I, don't, I don't know. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna pretend like the person who made this pie was not good at making lattice work. And honestly, they're not good at making pies because they put worms in it. So there we go. Use a bookshelf to make a big dollhouse. Oh yeah, those are cool. I love seeing the vintage ones that um, like they used to have, because I guess the origin of dollhouses was when women wanted to teach younger women how to run a household. So they had a, um, What was I trying to say? Like an entire case full of like the rooms of the house and they would like move the little people around. And that was the original purpose of a dollhouse and then they became ornamental. And so, yeah, having a shelf, like a dollhouse shelf or cabinet is very vintage. Or is that right? Or historical? Historical is probably a better word than vintage. Okay, there's gonna be uneven um, strips. <clears throat> oh, that's right. I love where the gnomes live. She does use cardboard. I always think of her using um, more paper clay, though. But I guess it is cardboard is the base that she she works on. She's so sweet. Y'all should definitely check out where the gnomes live. She's awesome. Yes, her she has a huge tree in the corner of her room. And... Um, it's just amazing. What she's done is amazing. And she's really nice. She'll answer any and all of your questions. And she goes step by step by step. So you can see how she made every single thing. Very helpful. I think I'm going to run out of crust. Is this how you make lattice work? I think it's okay. It's working. Alright, i got to cut another piece here. Fun and craft. Okay, I'll have to look them up too. I might have seen them. I'm not sure. Maybe I should do a cardboard dollhouse challenge on my channel. Amongst all my other 30 projects that I'm working on. Alright, let's do this piece here. That's, that's a little bit thick. That's okay. We'll put it on the edge. Like I said, this person wasn't very good at lattice work. And by this person, I mean me. 
Um, for putting two pieces of a cardboard together, if it was, if I was working on a cardboard project, if I wanted it to go together quickly and I was accurate with a glue gun, I would use a glue gun because you can usually get the glue to get in those little corrugation areas and stick it together and it doesn't add too much bulk. But um, if you have, if you're kind of clumsy with a glue gun like I am <laughs> most of the time, um, you probably want to use um, like tacky glue and just a lot of tacky glue, probably. Yeah. But if you have, if you want to put it together quickly, like sometimes I'll put like little dots of hot glue so that I at least know that it's initially holding and then I can go back with tacky glue and get the edges really good to know that it's holding firm, if that makes sense. Okay, so I have a feeling this is about to get messy because I'm gonna press all the little lattice work pieces onto the edge and I've just got a mud pie. So I kind of want to pick it up to do that, but I can't get to the edges because of the clay and I don't want to move it. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right. That was an operation just to get it into my hand. So now I'm going to push on this side, start cutting the edges off, and I think we're just going to get a muddy mess here. So I'm going to stick everything I can. Make sure y'all can actually see what I'm doing. It was a good idea, whoever said put the lattice work on first. Good idea. Because it would have been a pain to go around the worms. For sure. American dollhouses always look more interesting than UK ones. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about that. I haven't, um, I've looked at, um, there's a Facebook page called Melody Jane's Dollhouses and she's based in the UK. And a lot of her dollhouses looked pretty cool. Oh, y'all have the big Kensington Dollhouse Festival. I would think, like, so I think that's like the big, the big dollhouse festival in the world. You'd think that they'd have cooler dollhouses for you guys to go with your cool dollhouse event or doll, like, miniatures event. <laughs> All right. So this looks like a normal, delicious chocolate pie with lattice work, but now we're going to mess it up with some worms, which is exciting. Wow, it lasted outside in the rain for two months, cardboard? That's pretty good. Whatever you glued it together with, did you tell her what you glued it together with? Tacky glue? It must work really well for it to last outside. Okay. Pick it up. Um, I think I want to dust the lattice work a little bit before I put the worms in there. Um, Cause then I'm gonna have to dust around the worms. I'm just gonna get a little brown on there. Typically towards the, the top edge. Yeah, the, the chalk pastel does make it, um, oh, someone just said paint your lattice first. We're like this. Yeah. Worms gotta be last. Trying not to get it into the muddy part because then it'll mess up my brush. Thank you. Yeah, I like how the fish one turned out. I don't know if I'll get them baked before um, the end of the stream, but um, we'll see. We'll at least get them put together. 
I want to do just a little bit of black, just the tiniest bit, kind of on the upper parts. Not too much. Like that. I think that looks good. Bit of green. Ooh. Let's put, we'll put a tiny bit of green. Because I think I will put some uh, moss on them later. Um, they can be for the Adamses, but um, there's actually another project that I'm doing behind the scenes that these will probably appear in first, but they can share. They, they can share with the Adamses. Let's see if the green will even kind of... It's kind of a, a lime green, so I don't have my other green shaved down. Just go with what we got. So it's just like a touch, a very light touch of green. There's more on my hand really than on the pie. It's more like a hint, a hint of green. <laughs> Hi Edwina. I understand. I get sidetracked crafting all the time. Oh, thank you. Okay. So let's get the worms on. I'm going to try and, let's see, I'm going to put it down here. Zoom in just a little bit. Oop, that's the wrong way. There we go. All right, I think I'm the big guys in first. Oops. So we got one in. I know it's kind of hard to see. Again, this is going to be hard to do with long nails. <laughs> so they're kind of coming out there so far. Kind of want them coming out of one area, like they finally like burst through the pie. Clear, let's see. I like to seal polymer clay with clear matte glaze after baking to preserve. I use polyacrylic. I have that! <laughs> Artist matte glaze works too. I don't use clear fingernail polish. Yes, I think, were you the one who mentioned on my phone polymer clay one? Because I used nail polish on that one. And then someone mentioned that it does turn it sticky. And so I like put it in the description. I'm like, don't use nail polish. Uh, don't do what I did. But now, since then, I've gotten the polycrylic. So I th it probably was you because I got that same stuff. So I have that. Yeah, I think I need twi tweezers. You're right. Let me get my tweezers real quick. Those will work. Nope. What is this? I bought these at a garage sale. There's still something stuck to them. All right, so let's get some worms in here so that I don't end up ruining it. Let me use some tweezers. Well, I was gonna do the big guys first and then I got sidetracked, I guess. Ah, it is sticky. Try not to get on my octopus. I should have made like a, a rainbow shaped one to look like it was going in and out of the pie. That's what I should have done. One worm crawling across the top. Oh. Let's see, who wants to be the crawler? What is wrong with these? Maybe this is why these were at a garage sale. They don't want to cooperate. <laughs> Ooh, that looks so cool. That's a fun comment. <laughs> okay, let's get... 
this guy's going to be crawling, so I'm going to kind of push him down into the clay. And I just have two more. My tweezers don't want to pick them up, so I'm just going to risk it. And this way. All right. That is a worm pie, if I've ever seen one. That is disgusting. Um, hi, Mike. Welcome to the stream. We're making um, strange Thanksgiving pies that really have nothing to do with Thanksgiving. But uh, we're on worm pie at the moment. So I'm just going to dirty these guys up because they came straight out of the out of the dirt. Of course, the brown guys don't need anything. And the chalk pastel should stick to these even though they're already baked. But we're going to we're just going to go for it. Anyway, perfectly gross. <laughs> yep. I should have said gross pies, but I thought maybe people wouldn't click on it. <laughs> so I put strange pies instead. All right, so there's our little worm pie. They're definitely um, sticking out of the pie. So now we have, for those who are just joining us, we have fish pie. And he's sticking out and we have worm pie fish pie and worm pie and now we're gonna make an octopus pie i think this one we should do some kind of jelly jelly look with it and not put a crust on it so something what kind of um jelly are we thinking i think i'll put like a glaze on those worms make them look nice and um bleh. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll do this guy, and <laughs> if you didn't want to use the matte glaze, you could use a spray can, polyurethane like a matte one. <laughs> okay, so do we want to do, like, is a red jelly too gross? Or should we do, like, a bright blue? Blueberry. Blueberry. Like it inked? Oh, like do, like, black? Yes, I do have liquid clay. Should we do a, like an ink pie? Because like octopus squid ink. <laughs> I'm kind of liking the idea, like we could do a couple blueberries in there maybe, but I kind of like the idea of like black, black pie. Sounds gross. All right, so I'm gonna fill it up mostly. Yes, octopus ink jelly pie. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit different because these guys are pretty big. So I have to account for the fact that I gotta stick these um, tentacles that we already baked in. So I'm gonna put not as much in there. So we already baked these if you're just joining us. Just little, I have three little tentacles. So we already baked these guys. Um, they might be a little bit big. I don't know. But it's, it's okay if it looks a little ridiculous. I'm okay. I mean, we're making an octopus squid ink pie. So if it looks a little ridiculous, all the better. Okay. So, then I'm going to do this one. Kind of got to go with the rule of thirds. It always looks better with like three, like an odd number, an odd number of things. So that's why I made three tentacles. So I think I want this one kind of reaching out. That looks too uniform. You should have one kind of going up like that. What do y'all think? And then we're going to fill it up 
with squid ink berries. <laughs> All right. So the plan for that is to find my black. And I'm going to make a long snake. Oh, wow. <laughs> Enjoy your cinnamon rolls. Oh, no, they're miniature. Enjoy them still the same. Can't eat them, but you should make real ones, too. Sounds delicious. Um, I've been, like, on this, like, diet thing. And not, like... It'd be great if I lost weight, like that'd be awesome, but really just so that I can like feel better because I have a feeling I have like a gluten allergy or something because I've just not like felt great and I'm so hungry <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I want all the things I'm not supposed to eat like cinnamon rolls because they're full of gluten and sugar and all the stuff that makes me not feel so good, but uh, I digress. So anything you're like, and, and of course I'm making pies. Maybe that's why I'm making gross pies. So that I don't feel the urge to want to eat them. <laughs> an eye pie. Oh yeah, we talked about an eye pie earlier. Someone said eye of newt pie earlier. So it's kraken pie. Because the tentacles are so big. <laughs> Slot, big slime green bubble balls. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to start cutting pieces and just kind of rolling it into a ball to make our bubbles. And I can add a few green ones in there. I'm okay with that. Like dark green, I think, so that it kind of mixes in well. It's going to just kind of look black and bubbly. I'm glad you're helping people out with the names of stuff. It's always nice because I know I can go back and like I'm like oh someone told me what to do in that one live stream and that's why I put all the comments because I th think they're supposed to show up when you rewatch it on YouTube but I always take down my live streams and like boost the audio and take out um uh what do I take out I take out like the spaces when I like go to the oven and stuff like that but um so the, the comments won't show back up, but you guys have so much good information. I want to make sure that people can still access that information. So that's why I put the comments on the screen. Yes, I'm with you. I don't know why. Well, I just like, and I do feel better. I've been doing this for about a week and I feel a lot better. So much better. So much more energy. I'm happier. Even just like, you know, walking around like at work, I'm just like, I feel so much better, but I still want to eat a ton of bread. I just want to eat it all. And it's really, really rough. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. They're small. I still haven't found the best way to have the comments like load and stuff. Let me move this up. Y'all can actually see. I'm just making... They're not super small because I want to kind of fill up the space pretty quickly. I don't really know how many of these to make. It'll, I'll get over my craving for bread. Well, I got over my craving for Dr. Pepper because I used to drink so much in a day. And uh, I gave that up and it's been, I don't know, six years and I haven't had a Dr. Pepper and I don't have a craving for Dr. Pepper. Friends used to be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm drinking in front of you. I'm like, really? Now I don't care. So if that becomes the same thing with bread, that would be great. <laughs> Carboholic. That's, I am too. Ooh, yeah. I think it's the smell of bread. It's the bread smell that is so enticing and I have um I have like this candle scent that just smells like cake and I just really want cake <laughs> have you tried the tack it over and over yet oh you told me about that no I have not
And I really, I, I went to look it up and then I, I didn't get to the chance to, but I really do want to try it because especially when I start putting stuff in my Adams family house, um, I'm going to need it. So yes, I need to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, I love pasta too. I lived in Italy for like four months and we live, oh, this was when I was a student, we lived, lived on pizza and pasta. And I lost weight because you walk everywhere. And so you burn off every single carb that you eat. But uh, not so much here in America. You drive everywhere, which doesn't burn any calories. <laughs> I know, it was amazing living in Italy. It was so beautiful. Yeah, will you, um, Carmen Lita, will you share the what the tacket over and over is? Because it was when I was trying to stick some, I was trying to stick maybe the, I was trying to stick the swordfish to the wall in Adam's family house, and it just, um, was horrible. It wouldn't, I tried to use blue tack. And so, I think this is an Aileen's supply, um, like Aileen's tacky glue, but it's Aileen's, did you say what it was? I can't remember. But yeah, it's supposed to be like you can, um, like take daubs of it and it becomes, it's like, it's like a uh, blue tech type stuff. I'm not explaining it very well. <laughs> Put in blue and green glass beads. It will save time and look good. I wish I had some. I wish I did. Okay. So I'm going to try and see if this is enough. I don't know if it is or not. I ran out of lids. Maybe I can like wipe this lid off. Kind of, because I want to mix the clear clay, the liquid clay, with these before I stick it in. I think, I think that's what I want to do. So now I just have to get them all on here <laughs> without squishing them. Oh, so people have got some other things. Um, tacky wax, clear, clear blue tack. Oh, that's what you're, you're saying. That's what it is. Tacky wax. I haven't heard that before. I'm up for anything because the blue tack that I have is just not working. And I thought maybe it was old. So I went to go try and find some more and, um, yeah, that they, they didn't have any. And I don't think it was just cause it was old. I think it's just bulky and didn't work very well. Do you put them in your kitchen oven? Are you talking about the polymer clay pies? Aw, uh, bye crazy craft lady. Thanks for joining us while you can. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna mix it with this stuff and it's gonna look kind of white, but when you bake it, it goes clear. I'm gonna get a new toothpick. I just kind of wanna get them coated. And I guess, what time is it? I guess I will try and bake them. At least these three that we have done, I'll try and bake. We'll go a little bit over time, but that's okay. I think it's okay. All right, so now I gotta try and get it on there in between. It's difficult. <laughs> Um, yes, I put them in my kitchen oven, but I don't do a lot of polymer clay stuff. And I just make sure that I leave the door open so that any fumes, oh, now it's on the table. Any fumes um, kind of escape before I put uh, like human food in there, like actual food. But um, I think there's some people who say don't put polymer clay in a oven use for food at all. Um, so I wouldn't kind of go by my, um, what I say, but I do make sure that like none of like my cooking, like I don't have any trays that I use for food in there that any fumes could like settle on. So I, I don't know. I try my best, but you know, you, you can't go out like some people like me, 
can't doesn't have the room or the funds to go buy like a whole nother oven for polymer clay unless it's like what you do sorry i'm not even showing you what i'm doing i'm just sticking them in kind of in the open spots i may have to make a few more of the black things um i don't know people who do clay more do you have anything to to say bread oven I have put it in a toaster oven before and it burned very badly but I had it on convection which was probably my fault <laughs> which was very much my fault I'm sure okay I gotta I gotta make a few more of these little bubble thingies I probably should have put a little pastel into the mixture I didn't I didn't see your comment till after I mixed it up and put it on there. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. I will bake it. I'll make sure that we um, bake it. I'll make one last one while these three are baking so you guys can see at least what these three look like baked. Especially because we've got the poly, the liquid clay because it always kind of looks different. Sorry, I'm just making little bubbles. Um, yeah, I think you can use a toaster oven. You just have to know your toaster oven really well and make sure not to use the um, convection setting like I did that one time where it burnt like crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm liking how it turns out, turning out so far. I always like to see how they look after they bake too, though, because you never know. I've had some crazy clay mishaps. <laughs> that is a myth perfectly fine to bake in food oven best to create a baking box two foil pans like a clamshell if you use a tile in the pan also helps regulate temps oh that's great to know that makes me feel better <laughs> honestly it's good to know that it's a myth that you can't bake in a food oven i'm sure that myth caused a lot of people to buy a new oven Polymer clay does not release toxic fumes. No, no residue in your oven when baked directed. When it burns, it releases hydrogen chloride gas, which is caustic and will burn your lungs. Huh. Okay. So it's safe. Just don't burn it. <laughs> All right. Well, that makes me feel better about the fact that I've been doing it anyway. Okay. I don't know if that'll be enough, but we'll see. Add a little bit more this stuff just to kind of coat it. Was this what I was using? I think so. And I'm trying not to squish them, just trying to get them all coated in the in the gooey stuff. Oh, I said I would add some green ones. Let me add a couple green ones. Just cuz I said I would kind of hide in there. Be like, what's that green one? Mm. I've never heard of the baking box. Is there like a a tutorial somewhere um, on like how to make that or like a, a picture? Because like I'm a picture person. I'd love to see a picture of that. All right, I'm just going to add the green ones in here. Mix them up. So I've got two little dark green ones be mystery green inside the squid ink pie or the oct octopus ink do octopuses make ink as well because i know squids do i don't know do octopuses octopi obviously don't know how to say that all right so i'm gonna get this to kind of come around this side Some more in the middle. Okay, and then I gotta get some in this side. Whoops, whoops. Don't fall, don't fall. Don't fall. Alright, and then just making a mess. You're not doing it right unless you've made a big old mess. Ooh, a fly pie. 
It's a good one. Only problem is I had to make flies that are so tiny. I guess you could just like make wings sticking out. Or make little dots of black so that looks like they're just sitting on top of pie. I need to squeeze some in there. I made some difficult spots for myself with the layout of the tentacles. I don't know, maybe I should have put them in fur or put the, I don't know. I don't think there's a right way to make octopus ink pie. You just go for it. There's one more, come on. You need to be in the pie. There we go. All right, so this is what we have. Do you think I should like make some kind of drizzle for it or something? Okay, thank you. I'd love to know how to make the baking box. That would be awesome. Um, hold on, Edwina, I missed your comment. You made toilet paper to use the wings for what? I missed something. Um, Okay, it was autocorrect. I got you. Okay, I'm thinking I want to kind of see how it turns out and then we can add more. You guys think we should do the drizzle? Let's just do the drizzle. We got to add a little bit more. It's, let's add a little bit more. I'm going to add the black. Should we do a black or a green drizzle? Black or green, what do you guys think? Because I think we need something kind of to pop. My hands are all sticky. Black or green or like a brown. <laughs> yes. Like the cracking in my my other project. So I gotta vote for green, 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 green. Okay, we're going green. I saw three greens in a row. Alright, I'm gonna try and do the shortcut and do Oh, let me close these first. I'm about to get chalk pastel everywhere. I'm going to try and make a green drizzle with this. I think I'm going to need a lot more clay to actually make it drizzle. So we'll see. Mix that guy all up. It's going to be a nice bright neon green. <laughs> You never know. I don't think anyone's ever made this before, so maybe green is the standard color. We had a couple votes for black, green, purple. Oh, we're just going to go with it. Green's my favorite color, so when people say green, I'm like, all right, green it is. I don't know if I can drizzle this. Like, I feel like I need to find a way to, like, pick it up and let it, like, slide off because it's pretty liquidy. All right, let's see if I can like bend this cap. Well, <laughs> it's just kind of looking like a gross sauce. See if I can drizzle it on the octopus. Nope. Nope, we're just making a gross sauce. Did I do it wrong? <laughs> no, no one's made them before. <laughs> um, we're just going to go with kind of an interesting sauce on top of all the blackness. Because it's not drizzling, really. Nope, I don't like that. I don't like what I just did there. Let's see if I can get it off. <laughs> well... We'll just have it kind of have like a green pie, a green thing in the middle. Maybe I should have drizzled it afterwards because I think it's just kind of like sinking in with the clay already. So I maybe should have done the drizzle after it baked. 
let's just see what it looks like. It'll be, um, it'll be interesting. Okay. So I'm going to put these three. I'm going to put these three in the oven. And I'm going to make one more on the list while these bake. And then we'll see how these turned out. And then we'll be done for today. So let me go put these in and I'll be right back. So those are in the oven. Oh, I'm walking away because I just keep messing up my thing up more. Oh no, don't mess up your stuff. Sometimes you just have to put it down, walk away, get a breath of fresh air. I have done that before. A lot. <laughs> Sometimes you have to walk away from it for a full on year. All right, so I do have cobweb pie on here and I kind of had an idea while I was sitting here for that and I really want to make the other ones. Okay, I'm gonna let you vote on the ones that we already wrote down at the beginning. Cobweb pie. Dead bird pie, there's some on my finger. Cobweb pie, dead bird pie, or a pie with like a mouth, like it's gonna bite you. So vote. go ahead and vote cobweb, dead bird, pie with mouth. And that'll be the one, the last one we make. So let me know what you think. This one, this one, or this one. I'm going to clean up my spot here a little bit. So we have cobweb, pie with mouth, birds. We got to vote for each one. <laughs> Piece poem cut is used for, even for silverware decorating. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, I got to keep track. Okay, pie with mouth. Oh, let me write down. This is too much. Uh, pie with mouth. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I think mouth is winning. Yep. Okay, mouth is winning. I don't have to tally them up. I can see, see mouth several times. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the mouth. I'm thinking, okay, possum lady, the idea I had for the cobweb pie was to make it black and then like tear up a Q-tip, like the edge of a Q-tip and like, like spread it over it to look like cobweb. So I might actually make that one because I think it's really cool, but everyone voted for mouth. So I'm gonna make mouth pie. And um, uh, what was I gonna say? I'm thinking a cherry pie. So like the inside of it is like all red with like cherries and then it's like the the um, pie crust is like like with a big mouth opening up. What do y'all think? Oh, let me put the timer on. Hold on. I want to burn the pies I just made. Okay, we're going a little longer today. Maybe we can put a cobweb on top of the mouth just to see if my theory would work. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Need to make a little bit more pie crust color for sure. A mouth cobweb. <laughs> so many ideas. I wish I could stream longer, but I gotta go vote today. And there's something else I have to do. Oh, there, yeah, there is something else I have to do. Cherry with a face crust on top. Terrifying. <laughs> I don't want it to be too super terrifying. I want it to be cute. Gross. Not cute, but like fun gross. Fun, fun scary. Not gross scary. <laughs> All right. Do a little bit more for the pie crust. Ooh, there's some pie crust hiding in there. Get in here. And I definitely need some more brown polymer clay. That's for sure. 
<laughs> assume you have to grocery shop. Yeah, I, I can always assume. Ooh, scab pie. Mm. <laughs> I would love for someone to clean my mat off. I wipe it down every day and it just looks like this. <laughs> That's why I tried to put this lovely piece of paper over it. But my camera makes everything dark when I do that. So you just have to see my ugly mat. Cut the cobweb directly on the crust, then paint the web lines. That's a good idea. Salsa. Salsa. Salsa pie. <laughs> okay, so I think we have enough pie crust, hopefully. Um, I don't have to make as many individual cherries because I'm going to fill most of the bottom of it with red, and we're only going to see the part where the mouth is open. I'm going to make the... Hopefully that's not too much black. Maybe I'll take a little bit more off. I'm going to make it kind of a dark cherry pie. Hopefully that's not too much black, but I haven't been successful too much in mixing my stuff. That's what I'm using. I'm using baby wipes, but they just are not not up for it anymore. I guess I've put too much stuff on my mat. <laughs> um, I'm using, um, I think it's Sculpey 3. Sculpey 3. Because I just buy the packs. That come in like these things where it's just like a bunch of different ones at Hobby Lobby and I use a coupon <laughs> and it's really soft so I like that it's soft okay so I made that red just a little bit darker which I think is more of a cherry especially baked cherry um, color I think I need to make more actually I'll just put some regular red kind of in the bottom and then put the darker red that I mixed on top of that. And just kind of fill it in. So, um, let's see, how, what's the best way to do this? Do I make the mouth and then put it on and then fill it with cherries? Or do I put the cherries on and then put the mouth over it? Start with a pie crust on the bottom. Oh, that would have been smart. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good point. Don't use nail polish remover. I mean, the other side looks nicer. But I know as soon as I turn it over, it's going to get ruined again. So, I don't know. Okay. Um, the first way. You'd fill it first. I think I'd want to f make the mouth. I'm going to try making the mouth first. I'm just not going to press down. So that hopefully... And I think I'm going to use my rolling machine again. Because anytime I roll it out on the, mount, on the mat, it gets stuck. Okay. My handle keeps falling off. I do think I want this to be thicker since I'm going to be sculpting with it. Okay. Alright, so it is a little bit thicker, so that's good. I think I want to go ahead and cut the mouth and kind of pre-sculpt it before I stick it on there. Ooh, pig head pie. <laughs> Cherries in, create crust, then lay over top, just like a real pie. <laughs> teeth and tongue, you know. <laughs> it is going to have teeth, for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. I think I want to do... I think I just want to make the whole thing like a, a mouth. I think it's what I want. We'll see if this is terrifying or not. It's <laughs> kind of weird. Just reminding anybody else of Doctor Who. <laughs> Bye, Tanya. Yep, I'll repost it Friday. 
you can watch whatever came of this insanity. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. And then I think I do need to put the cherries first so it has something to kind of mound up on. Oop, y'all can't see. And I don't think I'm going to mix it first. I think I'm going to stick the individual berries on and then put, yeah, and then I'm going to put the stuff, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> oh my. Chain, Texas Chainsaw Massacre pie. Alright, so do the same thing. These I'm just gonna stick on until we have enough. I'm not gonna mix them in with the clay first. I don't have any glass beads. I need to probably invest in some because it seems like it'd be a lot easier than doing this for hours and hours. Um, but yeah. I'll have to, I'm going to have to kind of judge once I get the mouth on there about the eye holes. I don't want, I don't want red showing through my eye holes. <laughs> a weird sentence. I don't want red showing through. But eye holes is the same sentence I just said. <laughs> Didn't sound any better. But um, yeah, I'll just have to kind of play with that once I get the mouth going. That one had white on it. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, leather face. Okay, y'all can't tell anybody or get me in trouble, but... I have never seen a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And yes, I live in Texas. I'm not a big, like, really, like, horror, gory person. I love, I love, like, the campy, like, is campy the right word? I don't know what campy means. I probably shouldn't use that word. Um, I like the more, like, like, Alfred Hitchcock, where it's, it's kind of scary, and, like, it's just suspenseful, but there's not, like, a lot of gore, and, like, people, like, like being torn apart. Okay, I'll have to do that. I need to get some glass beads because this this is kind of a uh, laborious task, especially if I decide to do more polymer clay. Just make a nose. <laughs> That's a possibility. We'll have to see what the face needs once we get there. All right. Now, there is some white there. I'll just push it down in there. All right, let's see what we got. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, I think I'm just going to squish down the mouth just a little bit more. But I do want it to have like a split look. Like so. Okay, so now I'm going to put this stuff over it to make it kind of shiny. Isn't that... Um, I saw the advertisements for that. Isn't that the um, like remake of Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Because I remember watching that as a kid. I remember watching that. Was that too much? might have been too much. I'm going to smooth it around with my finger. I don't know if I'm supposed to touch this stuff or not. But I am. So that should be kind of glossy. Hopefully. Once it bakes. Edwina, you love gore? Oh, I just can't get into it. Like, I just, like, a, I, I think it's a nightmare thing. Like, I'll, I'll give myself nightmares if I if I watch, if I watch that, like for days, days and days and days. It's really, isn't it more kind of like a, kind of a supernatural type of, um, type premise? More than like a, like a sitcom? 
Because the one that I remember watching was kind of like sitcom y. Because it was like TGIF. Y'all remember TGIF on Fridays? I lived for TGIF on Fridays. I can't remember what else. Um, yeah, I can't remember what else. So it's definitely a tall pie, which I'm kind of liking because it kind of looked like the mouth's coming at you. I kind of want to watch The Haunting of Hill House because if it's a remake of the original Haunting movie, that one wasn't super gory. It was, uh, it was more like psychological. Currently watching, yeah. I definitely want to have watch um, Haunting of Hill House, but I have to be in the mood for spooky. Have to be in the mood. All right, now we're gonna make some teeth. I think it'd be creepier for it to have a nose than it for it to have an eye. Eyes. What do y'all think? Vote. Do you want it? nose or eyes added on? Cause I'll I'll add one. I think it's creepier if it had a nose. All right, we're gonna try making some teeth. Yeah. Now, I can make a little tooth, but if I can connect it is the is the issue. Well, it's stuck there. I don't know if it'll stay there. I know I'm going to drop a tooth in his mouth. I know it's coming. No gore yet? For, are y'all talking about um, the haunting? Nose, 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 nose. Okay, I see nose. <laughs> One eye looking at you. <laughs> oh, I think if the teeth were more human, it'd be creepier. I think I'm going more monster. And I don't want to do a ton of teeth because just because I'm feeling a little bit lazy today. I think I want to do more like a monster pie. We got three minutes, three for three or four minutes. I know y'all are talking about human teeth, but this just creeps me out. Then I feel like it's made from humans. I want it to be more like the pie is a monster, I think. Monster pie. I'm going to do a few teeth on the bottom. Oops, oops. This is where they get fiddly. I'm extremely surprised I haven't dropped one in the pie yet. <laughs> Tea could the teeth could be maggots. Oh my gosh. Maggots have to be the grossest things. They have to be. Oh. I have a really gross maggot story, but I don't even know if I can tell you guys right now because it just, it literally turns my stomach every time I think about it. Disgusting. Maggots are the worst. Okay, I think I'm just going to give him like two little teeth on the bottom. We'll see. Okay, so y'all voted nose, and I did have a little bit of clay left, so let's see. I think I'm going to make him like a big, like, snouty nose. <laughs> Is that a great face? 
Human teeth make it look, make me think of Sweeney Todd. I know. This the whole morning I was thinking of uh, Mrs. Mrs. Lovett's meat pies. Thank you. All right. Oh my gosh, the nose gives it such a much more of a dramatic look. <laughs> oh my. Let's see. I'm gonna kind of smush it in so it'll get a little bit smaller. Give him some deep nostrils. Where my toothpicks go? Right there. And I just gotta work on smoothing him in so he looks like part of the pie. Oh, I'm gonna have to redo the nostrils. And then I'll shade him, and he'll be done. Give him one of those little clefty thingies. Is that what they're called? What are these things called right here between your nose? The nose does make it look more terrifying, especially when his nostrils collapsed, because I didn't smooth it in very well. All right, let me give him his nostrils back. This is, all right. The stuff is done in the oven. I'll go get it in just a second. <laughs> Maybe it'll look a little less silly when we, uh, Put uh, some stuff. Freckles. <laughs> okay, let me go get the stuff out of the oven because I don't want it to burn. All right, I'm going to finish this guy and then I'll show you all three. Those are cooling off just a little bit. I think I want him to have more like the side nostril thing. I'm squishing his nose. Just making a mess of this. Definitely need to work on my nose sculpting skills. It's more of a monstery nose there, I think. Lumpy and bumpy. Yeah, I'd be hesitant to take a bite out of that guy. <laughs> Looks like you peeled the paste face off a person and made a pie out of it. That's what I was trying to avoid with the human teeth. <laughs> yes, I will post a picture of how this one turns out baking for sure. Okay, let me um, put on the chalk pastel real quick. Put him down. And yeah. No, we'll get do a little bit of black. The black seems to help just a little bit. All my pies end up with just a little bit of burntness on them. There's my brush. Okay. I tried to do the little bump things, but they um, didn't work super great. All right, so put chalk pastel around the edges. Now the chalk pastel doesn't want to, doesn't want to do it. All right, so you definitely need some up here. Just blow chalk pastel everywhere. Yes, I am. I'm going to yellow the teeth. Do I have yellow? Nope. I have some like light brown I might try and use. Just hoping the teeth don't fall off before I can bake it. I am horrible with delicate polymer clay. Always end up 
messing it up somehow. He okay, definitely needs some on the tip of his nose. Kind of looked like I made, gave him a mustache. A little blush on the cheeks. <laughs> Scream pie. Oh, that's a good one. Scream pie. Boston scream pie. That's the only cream, or no, that's the only cream pie. Chocolate cream pie. Chocolate scream pie. Looks a little off because the teeth are on the lips. Yeah. Oh, will. All right, so we're gonna get just blacken the t toppest edges. I don't know if I'm making it better or worse. I can't tell. Well, that was not good. And once that oil pastel is on there, it's not really coming off. Or oil pastel, ch chalk pastel. Okay, put a little bit around the edges. And then I'm going to try and make the teeth just a little dirtied up. Oops, that was a lot. See, I just end up putting a lot and mess it up. You gotta be careful with those chalk pastels. What was I about to do? He got burnt, yeah. And honestly, if you make a pie that's this tall, it's gonna get burnt. <laughs> if you've ever made a pie, you know that's gonna happen. That's why he's screaming. He's like, you left me in too long. Come and get me out of the oven. All right, I'm gonna see if this will kinda Dull the teeth just a little bit. And it made them orange. It's probably more accurate if you put something white in the oven. It's not going to come out white. Mm. Can be removed with cellophane tape. That's an awesome tip. So let's get a little bit closer to the edge. I don't want too much chalk pastel to drop in the mouth. All right. And then I think I'm gonna put a little bit more black on the edge over here. I stopped because I messed up and got mad <laughs> or frustrated. All right. What do y'all think? I mean, you'd probably have to look at it pretty closely at first to kind of get what it is. But I think for a first attempt, it's not too bad. Not too shabby. It needs snot running. Oh my goodness. That would be an extra layer of oil. <laughs> okay, so let's get them all together so we can see what we have created today. These might still be a little bit hot. The tray's cooled down. All right, so our first one was our fish pie. And I'm going to put like a little dab of um, like the, the polycrylic on his eye. Just make his eye shine up a little bit. I might shine up the fish a little bit too. Got our worm pie. And our octopus pie. This one didn't end up as shiny as I wanted, so I'll probably, oops, sorry, put some polycrylic on there as well just to shine up this area. And then I might try another drizzle. If I try anything, I'll make sure and put in photos so you can kind of see what I did at the end of the video when I re-upload it on Friday. But I think we have a pretty um, ghoulish collection of pies here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, there's a lag. Sorry. Sorry that there's a lag. Um, a little red at the nose. 
I think it would benefit from a little bit of red, but I don't have any of my... I'll have to try that and then um, I'll post it in the picture if, um, if that works and I got that on there so that you can see it. Yeah, I'll shine up the fish for sure. Um, and if I make any more, I'll let y'all know because I kind of want to try a few more of these that we had on the list. I think they're really fun. I had a really fun time making these. Um, I've only ever made pretty pies before, so these are really fun. <laughs> All right, well, you guys have an amazing day. Um, the weather here earlier was great, so I'm going to go out and enjoy the weather and then go vote and um, get a few things done. And then I need to get back to my mystery project that will be out in mid-November. And the other thing I need to tell you, if you're a, a regular stream visitor, the stream in December is going to be the first Monday of December because I have something I can't miss on the Tuesday. So I will make sure to post in all of my areas that the stream is going to be on Monday so that you guys know um, the best that I can get that information out. Um, but it'll just be the same time, just on Monday instead of Tuesday. So, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> yes, if you're American, make sure you vote. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. So as promised, here are the photos of the final pies. And on the fish one, I just added polyacrylic to the fish just to give them a little bit of shine. And I still need to paint all the little pans. I haven't gotten to that yet. But on the worm pie, I added polyacrylic a little bit to the mud stuff that we put at the bottom and also to the worms because probably if they're coming out of a pie, they would have been a little bit slick. On the mouth pie, I added some polyacrylic to the cherries. Um, the uh, liquid clay gives them a little bit of shine, just very barely any shine. So adding the polyacrylic really helps with that. And then I did add in a photo here so you can kind of see um, what I'm using. This is the stuff that's safe for polymer clay. And then for the octopus, um, it didn't really end up looking like a pie. It looked more like a dish. So I'm thinking this is maybe octopus and olives dish. So I ended up putting it in this wonky clay bowl that I just kind of molded around the bottle cap. But I thought it was kind of fun and it will go in my super, se se <laughs> super secret project that I was telling you about earlier. So I kind of like how that turned out as well. So let me know if you enjoyed this and for sure let me know. I was kind of thinking about doing this again in the December live stream. What do you guys think? Um, making more pies because we still had a lot of fun ideas on that list. Let me know in the comments below if you would like that. And I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!